Kelsey, how are we? We are, you know, live on the on the UC radio. So, how are you doing today? I asked, but let's let's let's. I'm great. I have no classes on Friday, so it's sort of a quiet day for me. But on the other hand, every Friday I post the uh, this week's episode for the radio show um, because it plays on Saturday morning. So last night, um, pretty late, I was working on the show, but I, I got it finished. Obviously, this week is on Dominican Republic. And if you look over to uh, TFA.radio, which is our Instagram page, you can see the, uh, the post for Dominican Republic. But um, so overall, the day has been good. That's great. So, I mean, let's, let's get into it. So yesterday we did the Dominican Republic. The first question I guess I have um, is, you know, what inspired you to start this show? What makes you wake up at 8.30 one day and say, hmm. I, we need to get, get this going? Absolutely. Good question. So I'm from the United States. And for whatever reason, growing up, my, my parents always talked about college radio. I, I was interested in radio just because I have a vague interest in music. Um, you know, I know some artists. And... Um, Frankly, I think the radio show at U of T is really, it has a lot of potential. Um, right now, it's got an amazing station director named Ken Stauer, and they're looking for a new station manager. Um, it's just a great collection of really creative people, and basically, I wanted to get involved in it. So the way I started was through a little volunteering, and I worked at the phone bank, which means people call from all over Ontario, New York, and say if they want to make a donation. So I was on the phone lines. So I did a little volunteering. And then shortly after, um, my dad recommended that I start a show. So what kind of show would I start? Well, I go to a school that has thousands upon thousands of international students, right? So that's one thing. Number two is I love traveling and I study political science. So Again, I have like a vague understanding of some of the countries that are out there. I got a world map on my wall over here. Um, so there's another component. And then the third part is just I have a computer, I have a microphone, and that's basically how it all came together. So that's how Tracks from Abroad started. And for anyone who doesn't know, the idea behind the show, it's a weekly show on CIUT 89.5 FM. And every week is a different student who comes from a new country. So this week is Dominican Republic, but let's take next week, for example. Um, my friend Sharon, uh, her family is from St. Lucia. So I just call up Sharon. I say, can you send me a playlist of music from St. Lucia? So she sends me a playlist. We talk over Zoom for like, I don't know, 30, 20, 30 minutes, not very long. And then all of a sudden, I, I'm able to create this awesome radio show that is a combination of political talk, of music, of talking about food, you know, where you can find good Caribbean food in Toronto, all kinds of stuff. So that's, that's what it's about. Very cool. And these are all very important questions. You know, I need to know, because I mean, there's only so much brown food truck I can eat. Actually, no, it's an infinite supply. But you know, if I if I want to take a break someday. Um, and yeah, I mean, you sort of alluded to it, but like music, is sort of not not just a starting point, but it is very much a way that students can share stories, the way that students can uh, really express their experiences, either within the city or whatnot. So um, how have you found or, you know, anecdotes of like stories or experiences that you think this radio show helps students? Yeah, so I totally agree. Music is like, it's, it's such a great way to learn about the world. It's, it's an easy way. Like, you know, you're in French class, maybe you're learning grammar and, you know, bonjour, comment ça va, all this stuff. But once you start getting into like French rap, right? French rap has been around for a long time. Um, and then also that rap influence has gotten into Quebec. So this is all to say that, you know, any type of music has so many connections to history, and culture and politics, which I'm into. Um, and so, yeah, it's a great way to, to learn about the world. But in terms of specific stories about how I've learned it, okay, here's an example. I did a show on Iran, and I had my friend come on whose name is Keon. He, uh, he went to U of T, he graduated recently. And so Keon took me to Little Tehran, which is sort of a, a little market, uh, like a shopping center up on Young Street, like 20 minutes north of here. And... 
we got to taste um, some kebab with sumac and all these kinds of different foods. Um, and then, like, you know, they're playing, obviously, um, Persian music in the store. So I get to hear, uh, you know, some Persian music. I think the artist's name was uh, Homar and, what was it? Homar and Kuman or something like this. Um, but yeah, so I basically I get to see all these cool neighborhoods around Toronto. You know, there's Koreatown, there's Greek Town, there's Chinatown. Um, and music, you know, has a place in every every one of these places. I agree. And they are all citizens of Funky Town, you know. Uh, I really, I think Toronto, like I'm from the United States as well. And I mean, not speaking for the whole country, but in terms of Toronto, like it is such a, you know, beautiful mix of culture and fusing and, you know, being different parts and just very chef's kiss. So um, in terms of, you know, this is this is a pretty hard question and it can change minute by oh, minute, but have you had? Have you found a favorite music? And you were talking about your stories. You have a favorite story mm -hmm. or like one song that, you know, you got the duration of like three minutes left. What is that? What's the last song you're listening to? Okay. Um, as far as cool music I've found, you know, I come from a very small town in a state called Vermont. Mm. And what kind of music do we have? Well, it's kind of like folk music. It's, you know, it, it is creative, but not you know it doesn't it doesn't um the music in vermont is not nearly as diverse as the music in toronto so um i've been able through the show to find music uh, from local torontonians who are making music um so for example this last show had some tracks by anna leah who is a dominican musician a rising artist She's on a record label called Lula World Records. Mm -hmm. uh, you may know the Lula, Lula Lounge is a restaurant in downtown Toronto. And um, so I've been able to connect and sort of network with these cool people. But let's see. Another component of your question was about specific stories. And there are so many good stories. Like, you know, you and I are having a conversation now. It's pretty relaxed. And that's basically what the show is like, too. Um, so one story that I can think of is... Um, I think two shows ago, number 12, we, we had, or let's see, number 11, we have 13 shows total, but two ago, uh, we had Mathis on from Haiti, and he talked about his dad, who is um, trying to become an Olympic skier to represent Haiti in the 2022 Olympics, and, um, you know, that that is incredible, because Haiti has never had snow, as far as I know, not in this you know, epic, um, maybe millions of years ago it has stuff. But the point is, um, this amazing story came out uh, and Mathis was able to share it. And he was able to share a bunch of cool Haitian music as well. And um, I know we're going to talk about my Spotify wrapped in a little bit, but one incredible Haitian is Kei Trinata. Mm. Uh, you guys may know, he's, he's won a Grammy, I believe, but he's from Montreal and he's of Haitian descent. He and his brother, Lou Phelps. And... Uh, yeah, long long tangent, but uh, basically th this show, it's given me so much. It's given me access to all kinds of cool music and all kinds of cool students at U of T. No, very cool. Yeah, I remember Haiti was like infamous for snow back in the Pangea days. It was <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huge. It's not necessarily, uh, you know, renowned for its snow, but this guy, he, um, he used to ski, I believe, in France. Mm -hmm. um, and he came back to Haiti and he was looking for a way to sort of integrate his hobby of skiing and sort of represent Haiti and make Haiti proud. And so that was his idea, is to form the, the Haitian, you know, national ski team and go all the way abroad. So we'll see how that pans out. Cool. Well, everyone at UC Student Life is cheering for Mathis's dad. It is on the <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, shout out, Mathis. Yeah, shout out. So, uh, you know, in terms of... We, we already see like sort of what the show is doing and whatnot. And do you have any vision per se about where you see the show going? Or like, you know, it is very much a very dynamic concept we have going on. So do you see mm -hmm. a pressure abro abroad for tracks for abroad? You know? Yeah, well, here, here's, here's what I think. We've done 13 episodes so far. Mm -hmm. Each episode was on a different country. So the show has been to 13 countries. However, there's around 200 countries in the world. And a lot of those countries are represented at U of T. You know, for example, I have people from Turkey, 
let's see, uh, people from Turkey, people from Morocco, uh, Palestine. Um, what are some other shows? Um, some people from France as well. But all of these students are interested in coming on the show. So there's so much potential for learning about new countries, you know, bring these people on the show. And uh, for anybody listening right now, if you're a student, if you're just an interesting person, come on the show, you know, be a guest, send me a playlist of music from your country, and we can talk. And we can see what's up, basically. But uh, the, the future of the show, I just want to see new countries through music. I want to listen to new countries. I want to meet new students. I want to meet new friends, as always. Um, but I will say that I also have an interest in filmmaking. So a project that I'd like to integrate into the show is going on field trips. I'll bring my camera. I'll bring some microphones. And we'll go on a field trip, let's say, you know, Max from Dominican Republic, who was on my show this week. We go to Lula Lounge, let's say. That's a restaurant downtown Toronto. They play Latin American music. We go to Lula Lounge. We have a drink. We have an appetizer. Um, maybe we'll meet uh, one of the artists who's on their record label. And that could be a really cool video, uh, sort of a field trip on tracks from abroad. Very cool, very cool. And there's, there, there is such a connection between, like, audio, visual. I mean, you think of music videos and, like, you know, you you have so much involved in that. Mm -hmm. it's very interesting. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see that you are stepping into the shoes of Mr. Worldwide. I think Pitbull would be very proud of the work being done here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pit Pitbull's a great guy. I mean, he, uh, I think he, um, they did like a contest, like, he, he, it was with Walt. Basically, he went all the way to Alaska to perform a show. So I'm definitely down with Pitbull. He, he travels around, and he, uh, he's he got a good reputation, in my book, at least. Cool guy. I saw that. Yeah, he went to a Walmart specifically. They were right. they, they said to go, and, you know, he said, put me on. I think he is a flight. I, don't, I think that he levitates, honestly, between countries, because he is just so worldwide. Sure. Um, but, yeah, to everyone joining us, thank you for coming on down, Funky Town. Uh, we're just talking about, you know, international music. If you have a favorite song from across the world, drop it in the, the chat. Yeah, dr throw down any any questions you guys have, too. Yeah. Um, you know, what hair product I use, any of this. See, I thought that was just natural. I thought that was just, you know. I'm just kidding. It's it's uh, it's one of those things where you, you take a shower before bed, and then you, you sleep on it, and it turns out real weird in the end. Yeah, no, that's exactly... So we were, we, we wanted to, you know, your Spotify wrapped, are, are you, you know, brave enough to, to, sh to show the people, to tell the people what's going on there? To sure, sure. It's okay. Wig. Zoe's saying my hair's a wig. You know what, Zoe? <laughs> Try to pull it off. I dare you. Um, I mean, they got Gorilla Glue these days, so I mean, but <laughs> no matter what, it looks, it looks good. It looks good. Let's get, let's get back to this. Let's steer away from my hair back to Spotify wrapped. Um, I think Wrapped is a pretty incredible marketing tactic. It's almost like a yearbook. Like you get to see, you know, um, basically, you know, what songs you liked, what artists you liked. You get to see the trends in your tastes, like, you know, month to month who you're into. Um, hey, Visme, Visme joined. Hopefully we can get Visme on the show too. Visme, um, show. come on. Okay, but here, here are some artists that I listen to. And I'll say ahead of time, um, <laughs> The, the artists I listen to, not terribly diverse, you know, like a lot of sort of hip hop, mm. a lot of, I mean, you'll hear who it is, but that is to say that this radio show has given me the opportunity to listen to music outside of the US, outside of Canada, listening to music from, uh, what's, a, what's a random place, St. Lucia, like, you know, that's, that's never going to come up in my Spotify rap, but now I have the chance to, to listen to that. So, big reveal. Kate Renata is, is towards the top of my list as an artist. And the truth is, I was listening to Kate Renata before I knew who was from Haiti. Um, and so, you know, or the show we did on Haiti, I learned all about um, Haitian politics mm -hmm. and about Haitian food that have this soup called uh, Soup Jumu. Um, and actually on our YouTube page, I did a great interview with a professor who talked about Haiti. Okay, next artist, Daft Punk. Um, a French, you know, this, this, this duo is from France. Unfortunately, they, they broke up permanently, I think, in 2021. Um, but always been into Daft Punk. Gorillaz. Damon Albar and Gorillaz. Um, that's a cool band. Another one, uh, 
sprung bin. Um, they do uh, like Thai funk, I think is their genre. Um, actually, one of my favorite groups. As always, MF Doom. Uh, Doom is always uh, at the top of the list. Okay. Um, much respect. Uh, I'll list a few here rapidly. Aphex Twin, Jay Dilla, Outkast. Oh, yeah. uh, here's, some, here's some weirder ones. Ariel Pink, Jack mm -hmm. Johnson, Gil Scott Heron. Oh, good and, one, good one. Yeah, do you react to any of these? Do you know any of these guys, Ruth? Oh, the tele uh, the revolution will not be televised. Yeah. I absolutely, that. absolutely, yeah. And he actually did a cool uh, project album with Jamie XX. It was like a, um, you know, two-person album. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it came out in 2011. That's a good one to check out, too. Very cool stuff, very cool stuff, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I, 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 Thai funk. I know Thai food is funky, but now I know there's some <laughs> good funky music there, too. And uh, our, our friend Patrick. <laughs> yeah, what's Patrick say? Uh, you're following Neil Young's example and remove your content from Spotify to protest Joe Rogan. This is a good, good question. Unfortunately, Joe and I are pretty tight. Um, he's going to have me on the show in a minute here. Um, so we'll we'll have to see Pat. I don't know, I don't know if that's gonna fly. Yeah, but I do have um, Patrick. If you need, I got this iPod Classic for you. If you don't want to, um, keep paying artists point zero zero three cents a stream. Yeah. Uh, Pat, that's pretty generous of her. You should take her up on that. I know, but you know, it's okay. It's okay. Not everyone's as good. But um, very interesting. So I mean, and you know, we were talking about sort of you're like volunteering with the radio station and your um, sort of like interest in political science and whatnot. And uh, how do you see those intersecting per se? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, a lot of the shows, I don't start out trying to make them political, mm -hmm. but the nature of music is that it, it, it gets political like it's inevitable basically. So our very first show we did with Chloe Xiao, uh, is a Brazilian student, um, an economist, st uh, you know, rising economist at U of T. But she told us about how this song by, um, ooh, what's the student's name? Uh, I forget the guy's name, but basically um, Brazil had a dictatorship and there was a lot of censorship. And so this artist put together a song that was very subtly dissing the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got through the censors and it was used, it was like a sort of a rallying cry for... Uh, for this revolution. Um, but you know what? Um, these students that I'm talking about that have these stories, I think some of them might actually be on this call. So maybe we should try to bring them in. So if you are uh, a guest, you know, who's come on, on our show before, uh, try to join our call and we'll uh, hang out a little bit. Does that sound good? Let's make this a round table. A round table, yeah. We got Anna. Anna, are you there? Hello. Hi, Anna. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How about y'all? You know, the living life, breathing air. Somehow we <laughs> get there. It's good. We're staying warm. Thank you for hopping in today. Yeah. Yeah, Anna, tell, Anna, tell us about your experience on Tracks from Abroad. You know, I interviewed you. You gave some music. How was that? It was fun. I think for me it was also interesting because... I had myself listened to that much Latvian music before. Like, it was obviously around me. But it, like, sort of uh, made me pay more attention and actually listen to more of it right now. So that's, that's kind of cool. That, so that was But, yeah. But it was, it was very, pretty great. No, very cool. You know, it's interesting, I find, like, you're not really aware of what you listen to unless, um, until you're not hearing it anymore. And then, like, you hear it and you're like, whoa, like, who's playing that? Yeah, very very, you know, grew up on that very funky Ethiopian Orthodox church music. And then I was like, not had it anymore. And then all the lyrics come back too, which is like, I'm like, whoa. That's like, you did that. Oh yeah. Like the associations with the music as well. Yeah. And then you're like craving food from home and, and <laughs> just, uh, you know, overall. <laughs> it, some of the only music that came out of Vermont is fish. I don't know if you know fish, but um, you know, not, not my favorite, I would say. Um, what other music came out of Vermont? I actually have a cousin who is from Vermont who has her own band. It's called Cowbells. Her name is Calmia Traver. 
And um, in the future, I might want to do a show on my state, on Vermont, because technically it is international, you know, across the border. So uh, keep an eye out in the future. If I do a show on Vermont, I'm definitely going to include my cousin's music on it, too. Yeah. I think you should interview yourself in, like, a mirror. I feel like that's the way to do it. That would be, that'd be I think Bernie Sanders himself would also love to hop in on that, you know? He's you know what? Yeah, I don't want to take too much of Bernie's time away because he's, you know, smashing the fash or whatever he's up to. <laughs> um, yeah, i love to talk to Bernie. That'd be cool. Feel the burn. Very cool stuff. It was a pleasure talking to you, chatting with you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you, Anna. Wow. Obrigada. Bye. <laughs> Okay, let's um okay, let's get requests in here. Sorry, y'all, I sound I look like a professor trying to figure out Zoom. <laughs> um question. Okay. Uh, hey oh! there he is. Hi everybody, hi everybody. How you doing? Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. So I'm right now in my lab trying to work on something, but then I didn't want to miss the show. So you just let me know. Look at the dedication. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing endeavor, I have to say the least. So I've been really excited ever since. So I, I'll just tell you the story of how I came to know about EFA Radio. Uh, so I used to go to the gym before, before the Christmas vacation. And just before you entered the locker rooms, there were two small pink posters uh, where it was written that tracks from abroad. And do you want to... Uh, and then the Instagram handle was also uh, uh, presented over there. I just went ahead and started following uh, whatever was going on there. And then Jesse came up to me saying, well, whoa, you have some really nice music on your profile. Would you like to be on the show one day? And that was really an amazing mm -hmm. experience. We, we, did, uh, we did our recording last week, right? Last to last week, maybe. Yeah. And it was so amazing. Really amazing. It was, really, it was really fun, and I think one of the coolest parts, like, you really got to look forward to this show because Deepayan is a musician himself, which is pretty unique. Um, so not only does he have an understanding of the music of his country, but he's actually played that music, which is a whole other level. Yeah, so, so I have been trying to learn. So my genre is principally classical music of India. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been trying to learn a few instruments. I trained on the violin recently, and then there are some other instruments that I play. Like there is an Indian bamboo flute, which is a flute like the Western instrument, but it is made of bamboo. And so I I just try to you know learn this uh, these instruments, whatever there are in Indian classical music. So cool. I mean, between the lab and the music and the gym, you are just, you know, a triple threat <laughs> here. Very in fact, in fact uh, I mean, I didn't have a place to practice my music uh, back at home because there's a lot of sound issues with having neighbors around. Mm -hmm. So I requested my department and they just gave me, gave me a room to practice my music whenever I come. So that has been also an amazing thing about you that I just requested for it, and then they were like, yes, music, that's what we want. Look at that. Wow. Well, yeah. I am excited. Hopefully, UFT will use it in their, like, next commercial or something. I think that would really <laughs> drive it. I think people would be really compelled to join the school. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Oh, and can okay. I ask, so what, so um, in terms of, like, because, it's really interesting when I think about instruments because there's like a, a guitar in every part of the world and then there's mm -hmm. you know, like a flute in every part of the world. And so um, did you bring this flute from India or did you, did you, okay, I was going to say. Yeah, I, <laughs> I got to, uh, both of my instruments from India. I got my violin and I got the flute. Mm -hmm. There is another instrument I like to play and love listening a lot. It's called the sitar. Mm -hmm. It's like, it has, it has a huge face and then a very long neck. And, um, but that, it is very difficult to move that instrument around because it's really, uh, so I got a small guitar, which is like a ukulele after I came here. And then I have kept these instruments here and there, a few in the department, a few in my room so that I can just, you know, play whatever I like whenever I'm there. 
Very cool. Yeah, I, I was gonna say a sitar, like a, a Toronto apartment that can fit that is gonna. But very beautiful instrument as well. Yeah, I know. And I mean, like Indian classical music is just so like rich and oh, and I mean, and do you feel like I know it must uh, be difficult sometimes? You know, you get homesick and whatnot. And does music really like help you feel? You yeah. Know, yeah. I actually found an association for Indian classical music over here. So I was kind of stalking people who were associated with this music before I came here in September. And luckily I did find some people. And I get the opportunity to practice and share music with them uh, maybe once a month or twice a month. So homesickness is not getting me that bad yet. Yeah. Ruth, if, Ruth, if you don't mind, we have a few other people who've joined who might yeah, not know yeah. what the heck this is. So oh, let, yes. me, let me give you all a little explanation. My name is Jesse. I host a radio show, a student radio show at UFT called Tracks from Abroad. And to my right side, you can see Deep Ayan, who is um, an upcoming guest on the show. He's from India. And every single week we go to a different country. We hear music from that country. And we are totally open to having, you know, new guests come on from all around the world. Um, and today, actually, we just released our 13th episode on Dominican Republic. Um, next week's show is going to be on St. Lucia. Um, we, you know, every week is a different country. So you learn all about the whole world and you listen to some cool music, too. So that's, a little, that's a little summary of what we're doing here. So, you know, if you need to get your, your music taste, I know it's difficult sometimes, but this is where you can find the good stuff. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take off now and then get back to my work. Uh, Thanks for joining us. I'm going to keep listening to this as long as it goes on. Thank you. And have a good time with your lab. Yeah, Hope you yeah thank you. <laughs> crack some life science, you know, miracles. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye. Wow, to have a great day. Have a great Friday. So thank you, Jesse, for, for bringing uh, a few students along who are, have been in episodes, who are coming in episodes. And uh, clearly we see that they it does provide sort of a backdrop to knowing the student themselves a lot more and then in turn knowing their culture where they come from. Absolutely. I've met so many cool friends. Uh, learned a lot more about Toronto, about what sort of communities exist here all because of this show, and I can only see, you know, see it going up, basically. See more cool shows, more music, and more interactions with artists in Toronto, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, thank you. Any, any, you know, final words? Any, anything we really need to take home? Here's what I'll say. Again, uh, this is Tracks from Abroad. This is a radio show on CIUT, which is the University of Toronto's campus radio station. If you want to hear what the heck this is about, uh, I just put out a show today on Dominican Republic. And it features an interview with a student friend of mine whose name is Max, uh, as well as the director of Caribbean Studies, whose name is, let's see, Nestor Rodriguez. Oh, I had him as a professor. You had him as a doc? Yeah, yeah, he's a very nice guy. And he talks about all kinds of cool stuff, like... You know, he, he's traveled from Dominican Republic to Atlanta, Georgia, to Toronto, Canada. He's he's a very knowledgeable guy. So you can you can hear all kinds of cool stuff on this station. And if you want to be a guest, you absolutely can be. Just send me a playlist of music from your country. Thank you so much, Jesse, for joining us, for making the live feel so alive and well with, you know, the cultures of different worlds. Thank you to everyone who joined us. And uh, we will be posting this, so no fears if you miss anything out. But tfa.radio, check it out. That is where to go. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you, Ruth.